What's going on, everyone? Happy New Year's. It's officially 2020. Gosh, that sounds so futuristic to say. The year of 2020. Hopefully you all had a good holiday. I've been a little under the weather here lately. I did plan on getting this out before the new year. But uh, yeah, I got the stomach flu. I actually still am a little under the weather. I'm running like a 101 temperature at the moment. I did start out with like 103. My family and I has been sick. We've been going through it. But uh, I feel like I'm better. At least I'm good enough to make this video. I'm not throwing up at the moment. That's calmed down, thankfully. Sheesh. I don't know if any of you have ever had the stomach flu, but it sucks. I haven't been this sick in forever. But, uh, yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this tour. I guess first off, um, I should show you where this is located at. So from Vault 76, I made it up here by Hemlock Holes. It's located right here. The reason why I chose this place is because of this right here, this entrance. I feel like this looks really nice, and I wanted to make a mini village. I feel like this would be a great spot for an entrance to my mini village. I also had a lot of help from my buddy Mystic Storm 9431 as you can see her gamer tag right there in the bottom left. She helped me a lot on this build with details and arranging stuff in this build. As you can see on the outside too, there's just defense walls surrounding the build to enclose it to make it feel more like a mini village. Also, believe it or not, this build literally took me 24 hours. I don't know if you all saw my previous video over me showing how much time I put into the game, but I had 1,499 hours. I just rounded it up to 1,500 hours. But as you can see now, I have 1,526 hours played. I literally spent 24 hours rearranging and building this camp. Mystic Storm also put a lot of time in this camp too with me. This place looks really awesome at night as well. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this tour. Hopefully you find this enjoyable. If you do, uh, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like. That'd be greatly appreciated. So, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, start this off with what's going on in this camp. As you see, we got four buildings. We got a cafe, an inn, a pub, and a trading shop. And in the center here, this was already here, I mean, as you can probably tell we got like a little partying area where people would go up here and you know jam out all of these chairs were already here it's so cool how much detail is around in this area I'm kind of curious if there's gonna be like settlers added here when the Wastelanders DLC update comes in I'm not exactly sure but if that's the case I'm pretty sure my camp is probably gonna go away but hey that's no biggie I had fun making this and I'm really proud of this build this is actually my best build that I've ever done in my opinion. As you probably saw, I also have a street light there hovering over the center area. This place, like I mentioned before, looks pretty good at night. But I wanted to show this off in the day so you all can get a better point of view of it. As you see, I added the fast knot poles here in the center as well. Also, there's typically like a bunch of hats that would spawn in this box here too, but uh, I already picked them up. So yeah, keep that in mind. If you ever come to this area, there's a bunch of random hats that'll spawn here. It also looks like this is a random area that you can spawn at if you drink Nuka Shine. That's cool. Never realized that. Guess that makes sense. It seems like a party in area where people was drinking at. Anyways, I guess let's go ahead and head into the cafe first. As you can see, this is what we got going on outside. Randomized letters here. The reason why there's like different lettering here is because, well, I feel like, you know, settlers that were here wouldn't have technically everything so perfect. I feel like this feels more realistic in a way because maybe they found, you know, a C neon letter, but they couldn't find an A neon letter, but they found this type of lettering. I don't know. I guess that, I, hopefully that makes some bit of sense. So anyways, yeah, this is what we got going on outside. Anyways, let's head on in picture we got a bench here a locker a table with a cooler and a foot locker and we got a picture of some apples 
Slocum Joe, Eat Well, Live Well sign, and Edotronic. And I really like the way this is set up here with the chemistry station next to the cooking stove. The reason why is because of this sink. I feel like it blends well with the cooking stove. Oh, and by the way, hopefully you find some inspiration out of some of these builds or details that we added into these builds that you can possibly add into your camp. There's a lot of detail going on inside these. I'm not going to be the best tour guide, especially right now with me being under the weather, but I really wanted to get this out to you all. I did have plans for this to be out before New Year's, like I mentioned before, but yeah, sadly I fell under the weather and still am under the weather, but... Not where I'm like living next to the toilet at the moment. But yeah, this is what I got going on outside of the cafe. Just a little bit of crops. That whoever's running the cafe would use to cook. And upstairs, which this is one of my favorite point of views of the camp. I really like this overlook. I feel like it's a nice little watchtower, and it just looks good next to this tree. I made sure to keep as many trees as I could inside this settlement, because I feel like the greenery around in this area helps the place pop more. So that's the reason why I did that. But yeah, that's what I got going on there. Inside here is a lounge area. Once again, I did have plans for this to be out before New Year's, so that's the reason why all of this is going on. This is like a place where people would be celebrating. Once again, this is like a partying area anyway, so I guess it kind of makes sense, even if this isn't out when I had plans to get it out. Because after all, this is like a partying area. It's like a mini concert area down there. You can also see a lot of drinks around on the ground. So I guess this still kind of flows nicely. Not too much going on, but, you know, this is where people would go to eat at hang out. These Foss Knot poles really help. I don't know if you guys uh, got these when the Foss Knot event was going on, but they really help to make your camp feel more party-like. I really like the tree in the background of the settlement, too. Just trees around, period. Makes the place feel pop more. I don't know. <laughs> Mothman Mount right there. <laughs> You're not noticing that going up, definitely. It's kind of creepy if you think about it. He's watching you. What's this? Huh. Some cranberries. Anyways. So yeah, that's the cafe. Go ahead and get a outside point of view of it. Like I said, I could have got rid of these trees if I wanted. See, if I put something over them, they can disappear. I actually had my staircase, this one anyways, over here. But then I figured out that would get rid of that tree, and I didn't want that, so I placed it here. I don't know, I just feel like the trees definitely help the place look better. Next up here, we're going to be giving a tour inside the inn. Which, as you can see, outside, we don't got much going on. We got a couple chairs you could sit at, an ice cooler, a Nuka-Cola machine. Well, you'd probably typically find outside of a Fallout Inn, <laughs> I guess. Um, anyways, so inside here, right off the bat, we got like a, I, I feel like it feels like you're coming up to a place where you would check out at, or check in, I should say, for a room. This is where the person who would be checking you in at would be chilling. And we got like a little waiting area too for people. Honey bee smell. Just because, why not? Also, on my uh, Thanksgiving display case here, I added a telephone and a restored fan, as well as a bowler cap. And the reason why I added the bowler cap, I know that is kind of random. I just feel like the bowler caps seem more business oriented. I don't know. That's the reason why I added that there. And the restored fan and telephone, you know, of course, makes sense for just being like a check-in place. A little TV there too, so he or she doesn't get too bored hanging out. Anyways, here's the first room to the inn. All the rooms are unique in their own kind of way. Once again, I had a lot of help 
from Mystic with detailing. Adding decorations around. Okay, here's the second room. Oh, that's a bit too high. It's going through the ceiling there. At first we didn't have a second floor to this place, but then we decide why not? We'll throw a second floor to the end. Here's the restroom. Of course there isn't a clean toilet or bathtub, so we used what we could to make it seem like a genuinely good restroom of what we could actually do at the moment. I know it's a broken toilet and a dirty bathtub, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's what we have to work with at the moment. The restroom signs outside so people know whoever's staying at the inn. So yeah, this is the first floor. Let's go ahead and move up to the second floor. I really like the overlook to the inn on the second floor here. Just overlooks this mini village. Really like it. Anyways, we're passing up a lot of stuff here. Let's go ahead and head into this place. This isn't a room. This is just like a hallway. Two rooms, as you can see. Here's one room. The rooms are just literally one foundation. This is a, an atomic shop flooring, too, by the way. Orange shag carpet, as you can see in the top right there, in case you're wondering. But yeah, and here's another room. All the rooms don't have televisions in them, of course, because those cost quite a bit toward your budget. So yeah, this is one little area. Now, heading on out, we got a few more rooms. As you can see, three more right here. So there's a total of seven rooms that people can sleep in. Oh no. Oh crud. Eh, and I don't have any more budget to fill that in. That's kind of bugging me. Oh well. Guess that's a flaw. I was going to point out some flaws. Nothing is perfect, of course. I was going to show some other ones. Well, another one that I was kind of disappointed in about this build. I had no idea that that wall wasn't there. But yeah, this is all the rooms. Once again, they're all unique in their own kind of way. I hate that there's a freaking hole right here. I'll fill that in in the future. I didn't realize that. But, um, yeah. So, once again, there are seven rooms, as you can see. One, two, three, going in here. Four, five, and head downstairs. We got six and seven. Eight, counting the restroom. But that's not really a room. No one's staying in there. So, yeah, that's the end. I got lucky to have like the greenery over in this area. It's because I'm right by the forest area. I know I'm in the Toxic Valley region technically, but I'm also near the forest area where there's a little bit of greenery blending over here still. I really love this location. I feel like it's a great area to make a camp at. Just a nice hangout area. Anyways, now let's go ahead and move on into the pub. Oh, this could definitely help me save a bunch of budget here. I got rid of this Sanitron. I might do that in the future. Yep. Okay, so next up here, we're going to be heading into the pub. 
So outside we got like a cooler, a bench, American flag. Once again, these fast knot poles because it helps it feel more party like. Also a porta potty, just in case someone may be overindulging inside. And inside here, we got like a bunch of drinks on the display cases, a brewing station, a couple signs and mounts to make it feel like a pub. Of course, the fancy bar set too, which I got from the Atomic Shop. And the dining area, which these tables and chairs come with the fancy bar set as well. By the way, over here, um, I wanted to point this out. This is a really cool detail. And I learned this from my buddy uh, C down there. As you can see, he's down in the bottom left. Um, what you do here is uh, you get a winter fireplace, put it on a rug, and then you add the Santa Crash to the wall, and you place the winter fireplace toward the wall while on the rug, if that makes sense. And it should phase right through where you can have the Santa Crash inside the winter fireplace. So it looks like, you know, Santa got stuck inside of it. Pretty cool. Um, which, by the way, in case you don't know what this is, this was a limited time item that we could get from uh, the holiday gifts, as you can see. Winter wall crash. And in case you're wondering about this, the winter fireplace, this was from the Atomic Shop. So, yeah. This is what we got going on inside the pub. Not nearly as big as the inn, but it gets the point across. I feel like it feels like a place you would go to drink at. Anyways, carrying on, this was already here too by the way, this generator was already here, and this Tinker's workbench was already here, which is pretty nice. Looks like it's starting to turn night too, sweet. I love the way this place looks at night. So next up here though, we got the shop which there's a lot of detail inside the shop. Outside the shop, this is where my vending machine is located at. And I got a weapons workbench and an armor's workbench here. And inside the shop, we got just loads of magazines on the magazine rack, a clean American flag, a display case, with a bunch of little goodies on it. Just lots of details to make it feel like a shop. So yeah, there you guys have it, everyone. Um, that's pretty much my mini village. This was by far the longest I've ever spent on a build. Literally 24 hours. It might have been a little less or a little over. I'm just averaging to 24. Because last time I checked, which was pretty recently, I had 1,499. Then I got started on this camp that I wanted to showcase, that I wanted to upload before the new year, but that didn't happen, but yeah. Let me go ahead and show you something though that I was kind of disappointed in about this build. I couldn't wrap the defense wall all the way around because budget for one, and for two, my building area. As you can see, like I had to stop it here. Like I just didn't have space to make it all the way around like that. Would have been cool but nah, wasn't happening. I was not able to fit that many buildings like that. I should have started with the defense walls first, probably. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh well, I still like the way it came out. Oh, and one more thing before I completely wrap this up. Here's where um, you know the overlook was for the end. Nothing's floating too. It blended nicely here. Has a nice little alleyway there, and the poles connect all the way down, so it doesn't seem like nothing's floating. Seems like that could actually be a thing, you know what I'm saying? I hate seeing camps float, I don't know. It's one of my pet peeves. I feel like floating camps just look awful, unless they're meant to be floating, like they're meant to look like a spaceship or something. That's about wrapping up this video, everyone. Hope you found this tour enjoyable. 
I know I'm not really energetic at the moment, but hopefully this got the gist across. I'm out of here, everybody. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, can't wait to see what y'all think about this. I'm going to be reading the comments for sure. Peace.